to the epic journey across the high atlas, towards the desert and back. It's March and we are tackling brand new yet empty mountain passes, must do scenic rides and a road less traveled here and there, tasting local specialities and just having a blast on a motorcycle in a land that's so different to ours. But wait a minute, I've seen all this before, one year ago to be exact, a bunch of guys, me including, rode three and a half thousand kilometers around all of Morocco, and it would seem we were finished with it. You see, I have been developing this habit of returning to places again and again, on motorcycles or otherwise. Why would anyone do that, you ask? Legit question, after all, there are so many corners of the world to see that spending your precious vacation days on the same places seems, um, wasteful? Let me explain. Travel is like learning a language. The first time you visit a country, you learn the alphabet. Second time, you start to memorize some words. Third, fourth, and so on, you puzzle together sentences and only after many repetitions you can dream of calling yourself anything close to an expert. Ticking off destinations like it's some sort of a race is not my cup of tea. And in fact, it's never the same. The bikes, the roads, the weather, the company, mix it all up and you have yourself a brand new adventure. And that is exactly what happened this time with the romantic twist. I could have of course just booked a good spa at home and called it a date, but that would be too easy, so I invited my wife on a different type of a get-together, on motorcycles, in Morocco. Because why not? And because I've learned the alphabet a year before, making the whole experience a tad bit more predictable, which is what you want on a date. <laughs> Trust me. This time our story starts in the big and busy city of Marrakesh, where we spend the night navigating its bustling Medina, getting lost in the maze of back alleys, doing some sightseeing and tasting that sweet Moroccan cuisine. We have arrived here by plane and our plan is to ride rented bikes, which is a first for both of us. The good news is that the bikes in question are Royal Enfield Himalayans, which happens to be the bikes we are both very familiar with, as it was my first ever bike and my wife still rides one daily. Apart from the sudden culture shock of finding ourselves in the midst of not the most organized traffic, we keep it calm and make our way out of this mess and head straight to the mountains, with a plan to make it all the way to the other side in one day. This time we chose the spectacular but very quiet road that takes us from Demnat all the way to Kwarzazate. In theory it's all paved, some of its parts even fresh out of the press, but other parts deliver what we really came here for, amazing gravel with bits that feel at home on dangerousroads.org. The road multiple times drops down to valleys, but then rises up again well about 2000 meters. Thankfully we don't encounter any snow, but it is a possibility in these parts and at this time of the year. The warm gloves do come out however. And with the last light fading, we reach the Valley of Roses. Each April and May, the valley is flooded with local women picking roses to be shipped off to factories where they are turned into everything, from shampoo to hand creams. We are a bit early for that, but that also means that we are the only guests at the hotel. We enjoy the solitude 
and exclusive service before heading to the real destination of the day. The little known gorgeous de Amagegag, which I did ride a year before, only in a different direction. A newly built high road now circumvents this amazing gorge, but it's a must for all off-roading fans. The off-road path however being a bit of a stretch, since it seems that the road is being maintained and there were no signs of the struggle that we met when we were here. Morocco shopping might be known for their medinas, but nothing beats a small rural shop with a personal treatment. We are traveling during Ramadan, so no eating or drinking, even water during the day for the locals. We tried to follow it too, but we couldn't refuse a friendly offer of a tea sit down. And that inspired us to take a piste instead of a long tarmac way around. Pistes are dirt roads that connect small settlements and are generally off the beaten path. However, the rapid economic growth means that their days are counted. So ride them while they last. And in this particular case, it didn't last long, as our destination are the popular Dades Gorge, which in turn means getting stuck behind campers and all sorts of other traffic. The iconic view of the switchbacks you find on many Moroccan tourism booklets is nice, so it attracts the masses, but most never venture further than the restaurant on top and miss the Grand Canyon-like views down the road. While a brand new highway is in the works, what continues is still a wonderful high elevation piste. The day is running out, but we are stopped in our tracks by massive roadworks with no way around. Backtracking would mean a day worth of riding, so we choose to stick around and trust the operator of the excavator who promises to be done in an hour. What he did not mention is that the hour was meant only for the first pile of rocks, not the rest around the corner. It's getting dark and cold, but it's the Ramadan, which means the guys are eager to return home for their first meal of the day after the sunset. For us, it means that they move heaven and earth and clear the path just before the dark. After the construction site, we experience a piece of what Morocco will look like in not too distant future. Perfect asphalt roads, doable on a sport bike. Warming up by a fireplace and being happy about a hot tagine? We might be in Africa, but it's proper cold outside. By the looks of it, we couldn't tell but it turns out we ended up in Agudal, which is 2,300 meters above sea level, and deep snow is forecast in the week. You really do need to pack warm layers when coming here in March. With the lust for warm desert spirit, we make our way down the mountain. Well, almost make it. Bonjour. Gasol? Morocco might have a fast developing network, of petrol stations, but in sparsely populated areas, fuel from a bottle is still the lifeline. I admit that it feels a bit sketchy, but that could only be my prejudice talking. Our road to the desert takes us through the Todha Canyon, that is just a quiet and beautiful ride with towering limestone walls that make you feel small. We 
it only ever gets busy once we reach the narrowest part, where it forms a spectacular gorge that is popular with climbers and people taking selfies. We could expand on that theme, but sorry, we have places to be. And by places I mean a 19th century Xar, a bit hidden away from the main traffic. It's a fortified village made completely from adobe. No, not the Photoshop one, but a building material made from earth and organic materials. Basically mud. Xars are traditionally inhabited by Berbers. This particular one, El Kharbat, at first looks like just a museum presenting the culture and the way of life of the Amazigh people. But it turns out the people still live here. There's everything here, from houses to shops to school and even a mosque. Wandering the dark alleys pierced by channels of light feels cinematically surreal. It's these things we don't usually do when traveling enduro style with the guys. But enough culture, let's undress and enjoy the heat. Mm, that came out wrong. I mean, we are finally in the desert and the wind in our faces now feels more like a hair blower than an air conditioner. The ride on the desert highway gets sidetracked by intriguing silhouettes on the otherwise featureless horizon. Out of nowhere, a horde of camels emerge, and we have to investigate, even if it means leaving the road and heading in a straight line towards them. And what a sight it is! Gentle giants sliding gracefully towards you, stopping for an eye contact and continuing their journey towards a sip of water. Yeah, I know, for locals we probably looked like some weirdos admiring the equivalent of cows in our country. But you know, whatever, it's camels, in the desert. Some tears of joy were shed. Our eyes dry quite quickly as we reach the sand dunes of Erg Chebi. But this time around, our bikes are not up to the task to tackle the deep sand. But our feet are, and in this heat we are more than happy to shed our tactical skins and boots and literally touch the Sahara. And for some of us, who don't mind waking up early, it's the sunrise in the dunes, as it is for the tour groups in large numbers. I'll just look away and cue the soundtrack of the dune. For copyright reasons, don't cue the soundtrack of the dune. Our stay in the dunes is not long as it is the furthest point from Marrakesh that we can allow ourselves to venture. So we turn back towards the mountains in search of a cooler breeze. Famous last words, as I am about to find out in a couple of days. Before all that, let me introduce you with Rudolf. No, not the reindeer, the camel. He lives in the desert and is feeding on tiny green leaves of a very thorny tree that is very conveniently called camel's thorn. A very resilient shrub that can thrive in the harshest desert, with roots reaching subsurface water as deep as 20 meters. We 
With that lesson on flora and fauna out of the way, we venture even deeper into the countryside. With no tourists in sight, we wave some kids that surprisingly don't want any treats from us. Then pass some goats and sheep, only to meet a guy who takes us on his motorcycle to another magical site. 8,000 year old rock carvings of eight wazik lying in the field just like that. They tell a story of completely different Morocco, proving that at the end of the new stone age, rhinos, giraffes, gazelles, elephants, antelopes and whatnot roam these parts. Judging by the depictions of hunting and fishing tools, this arid expanse used to be a riverbank teeming with life. Welcome to the Neolithic Instagram. Amazed by the experience, we make our way back to the civilization. Although, after what we've seen, I'm not so sure about that statement. Cue a scenic intermission. As the saying goes, it's far from here to Timbuktu, so we settle with an oasis in Zagora and a luxury experience. Again, only for the two of us, and for a ridiculously good price. After peeking into another Xar, we stuck up on some juicy dates. We are on a date, after all. I mean, we are in the Dra Valley, known for its date palm groves. And we are back in the mountains, looking towards the views of Tupkal and the other peaks of the High Atlas. That's the thing with the mountains, you just have to step away from them for a couple of days, only to start missing them again. What we did not miss is the cold. Remember the sweat just this morning? I know I don't. And we are almost out of gas, again, which means turning off our engines and rolling down the mountains pretending to be on electric bikes or something. Mmm, the sound of nothing. I could imagine this being a thing. Stop that thought, motorcycles are all about the roar of the engines, right? Right? Do -do. What isn't right is the hotel in Taluin we stay at. It was basic, to say the least. At least they had some beautiful birds in the backyard. Not sure for what purpose, though. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, and this region is famous for their production of saffron. So there's that. We are now entering areas where the last year's earthquake 
hit the most. The epicenter being right here in these mountains. The same reason we postponed our originally planned autumn trip as it didn't feel right at that time. Collapsed houses, temporary tents left and right. But people somehow move on and manage. It's the same resilience I saw in Nepal after the 2015 earthquake. Merci, merci. We Westerners should learn a thing or two about managing what life throws at us. And maybe, just maybe, not be so upset about the wrong thickness of the oat milk foam on our cappuccino. Just a thought. Starting to look what look like Christmas. Indeed, it does. But complaining after all that we've seen would seem so out of place. So we just carry on. The misery is also part of the adventure travel. Remember me dreaming about the views of Tupkal? Well, those are not happening either. But that's okay. You saw those in last year's video. You did, right? It's raining cats and dogs as we make our way over dizzy Ntichka Pass. But that's okay too. A less than stellar hotel later. Rur rural tourism. But that's okay too. We are back in Marrakesh. Back in the orderly disorder of it all. Yes, this trip might not end on a high note. Even being all touristy in a Bahia palace doesn't help. But all it takes is to watch this video again and remember how blessed we've been. And who knows, after having memorized some words of Morocco now, maybe a time will come to puzzle together some sentences? Shukran for watching and Baslama Habibi. See ya.